In our society, the word unusual often comes with a negative connotation, but today we are simply talking about unique, rare, and wonderful people. From medical conditions to abilities and all the fascinating, unbelievable things in between, here are the top 10 unusual people that are one in a million. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Charlene Tracy. We hear it all the time on TV and those weird medication infomercials about how important it is to keep your cholesterol under control, and they're right, it is super important to your health, but what if you never had to worry about it? ever. Well that is what people who are like Charlene Tracy don't have to worry about. Charlene was born with a mutation of the PCSK9 gene. This gene is responsible for making a protein that helps to regulate the amount of cholesterol in the bloodstream. There's a small number of the population that has a slight or single mutation of the gene, but those like Charlene have inherited the mutation from both parents, which rendered her basically incapable of developing high cholesterol. Honestly, that seems kind of like a superpower. All the cheese you want, whenever you want. What could possibly go wrong? In our number 9 spot today, we have Scott Flansberg. Scott is a person who has an ability I think a few of us will be jealous of, and that is that he is the fastest human calculator on Earth. The guy's super good at math and has a Guinness record to show it. His talents were first recognized when he was just 9 years old, and by 10 years old, his teachers were turning to him for answers. Once an MRI scan was completed, it seemed as though there might be an answer as to why Scott was able to do math in ways no one had ever seen before. There's an area of the brain that is apparently called the Broadman Area 54, or BA44, and Scott's just happens to be four times the normal size. How has Scott used this ability? Rather than going on to study a bunch of higher level math, Scott aimed to figure out how he could make a difference right from the get go, and that is why he dedicated his life to trying to help create new educational tools in order to help inspire kids to engage in the subject at the most basic level, which is not only extremely important as it's the foundation for all the lessons to come, but it's also the time when many disconnect. He also wants to start using a new calendar that he developed. We can't change the fact that there's 365 days in a year, but he he thinks that we should have 13 different months, 28 days each, and one zero day to kick off the year. He thinks we should all start using this calendar in the year 2023. I'm not exactly sold, but I'm a sucker for how neatly that all divides. What do you guys think? In our number 8 spot today, we have Conchetta Antico. For those of us that can see color, that is due to something in our eyes called cones. Mostly people have three cones, which help to communicate with the brain in order to see colors. Some lucky few, however, were born with four cones, and Conchetta is one of them. This percentage of the population who are like Conchetta are referred to as tetrachromats, and it is said that they have the ability to see 100 million different colors. What's really interesting is that this is far more common among women than among men, so much so that for a while it was thought that men couldn't have this fourth cone. In regard to this superpower, Conchetta had some words to say about the possible downsides of it as well. She said, quote, the grocery store is a nightmare. It's like a trash pile of color coming in at every angle. Honestly, that makes a lot of sense. Having the ability to see that many colors though, you gotta ask what is her favorite of them all. In Conchetta's case, it's white because she says it's peaceful and restful for her eyes. You know what they say, no rest for the tetrochromats. In our number 7 spot today we have Rebecca Sherrick. You know when you're comfy, cozy, and bad about to doze off and then all of a sudden you remember that super embarrassing thing you said or did that one time and now you're up? Well Rebecca has that basically all the time. She has the ability to remember every minute of her life in great detail and she says that every time she can feel the feelings like they were new. Rebecca has what is called a highly superior autobiographical memory and while this gives her the ability to remember everything, she also lacks the ability to forget. She says her memory starts around her first birthday and that most of the memories are pretty mundane, like the breakfast she ate that day. She gets headaches and anxiety and every night she has to listen to music to fall asleep or else she is just getting constant flashbacks. Her memory is helping her with her passion, however. Rebecca wants to share her experiences across the world and her memory helps with remembering lines for public speaking and, while sentence structure takes a little getting used to, learning foreign languages becomes much easier because all the words stick right away. 
Rebecca is also allowing experts to study her brain in order to try and find out what exactly gives her these extraordinary capabilities. Their hopes are that perhaps her brain could be used to find ways to help those who are afflicted by Alzheimer's, brain injury, or stroke. In our number six spot today, we have Derek Paravicini. Derek's story starts out when he was born very prematurely and without his sight. This began his journey of learning and experiencing the world through sound. When Derek was 18 months old, his nanny brought him some old toy organ that was a hand-me-down, and from here, everyone was astounded. It turned out that Derek was able to slowly start playing the music he had heard throughout his little life on this organ. It became abundantly clear that his musical brain did not work like many of ours, and his parents thankfully purchased him a piano. Music continued to be a part of his life as he grew up, and he even used the music as a way to overcome the more difficult areas of his life. Now he has a phenomenal ability to play music he's heard, even if it is only once. He was able to play an entire piano concerto with 11,000 notes just by listening to it. Derek says that his music is what helps him connect with others, and it truly is part of his identity. In our number five spot today, we have Joe Cameron. Joe's story is absolutely fascinating, as she didn't know exactly what made her so unique until she was 65 years old. She was receiving an operation on her arthritic hand, and this was coming just shortly after she had had a hip replacement. The doctor told her that this hand operation was going to hurt, and that she'd need more painkillers than the last time, but shortly after her operation, he came in to see her, and she wiggled her hand right in his face, no painkillers, and more curiously, no pain. That is when it was realized that further testing needed to be done, and it was revealed that there was an abundance of anatomy anandamide in her body, which is a fatty acid neurotransmitter. This in turn caused her to not feel anxiety, fear, or pain. This has caused her to be an exceptionally happy and worry-free person, but it's also caused her to push what the rest of us would consider limits. Jo has gone on to offer her help for teams that wish to research her in hopes of one day using her exceptional difference to help develop an all-natural but actually effective pain relief. In our number 4 spot today, we have Jeannie Peeper. Jeannie is a woman who was born with what is known as fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva, or FOP. This is an extremely rare disease that is caused by a mutation in the body's repair system, which results in muscles, ligaments, and tendons hardening spontaneously or after fibrous tissues have been damaged. This usually results in joints that are permanently frozen, and it is only seen in 1 in 2 million people. Jeannie was diagnosed with this disease when she was a child, and although she was told she wouldn't live past her teenage years, she managed to not only greatly outlive those expectations, but she also allowed experts to research her, and this gave them extremely valuable insights into the disease and how to treat it. Because of Jeannie's contributions, there are now better understandings of how to possibly treat people who also experience the same thing. Although there isn't yet a cure, every piece of information is important and valuable and is one step in the direction of helping all of those with FOP. Jeannie is certainly a remarkable person. In our number three spot today, we have Thomas. It is often said that in the American population, the blood type AB negative is the rarest, with only 0.6% of the population having it, but that is in fact not true. The rarest blood type is actually one I had never heard of before, and it is called Rh null. This blood completely lacks Rh antigens, and in 1961, an indigenous Australian became the first person discovered to have that blood type. Since then, there have only been about 40 other people who have been identified as having Rh null, which makes it obviously extremely rare. Blood donation is a very important thing that helps save lives, and since this blood type is so rare, there are only about 9 active blood donors of Rh null in the world, and our friend Thomas is one of them. Having a blood type like this means that you could be the life-saving donor of another rare blood type that people need desperately, which is a large burden to bear at times, but it also comes with the risk of, when in extreme and terrible situations, that there might not be any blood to save your own life should the unfortunate circumstances arise when you need it. Rh null blood is often referred to as golden blood because it can be given to anyone. In our number 2 spot today, we have Catherine and Christy Fields. Catherine and Christy are twin sisters who suffer from something known as Fields disease, which has been named after them because it appears as if they are the only two people in the world who have it, 
it, making it the rarest disease in the world. It is a neuromuscular disease that causes muscular degeneration. Both twins use wheelchairs to help them with mobility, and they use electronic speaking aids to help them communicate. This is something that the twins were born with, and it began being studied when they were just four years old in 1994. After countless tests and examinations, the doctors were unable to match it to any other known diseases, making it a complete anomaly for them. Last I could find about the twins, they were trying out Botox, which works to relax the muscles as a potential treatment option because both women sometimes suffer from painful spasms. It must be incredibly terrifying to be going through something that has never been seen before, but Catherine and Christy and their family continue to be strong and brave and raise awareness of Fields disease. In our number one spot today, we have Zion Clark. Sometimes you hear about people that you know you'll never forget about, and Zion is absolutely one of those people. Zion is a successful wrestler, he is a Guinness World Record holder for walking on his hands, and he is also a super optimistic person. He also just happened to be born without any legs. Zion was raised in foster care and often had to deal with bullies as well. At the age of 17, he was adopted by his mom, and this is when things really started to turn around for him. Zion was born with what is called caudal regression syndrome, and for from here, he was immediately placed into foster care. Through all of the trials and tribulations he had to overcome, Zion managed to not only achieve academic success, but he became one of the best wrestlers in his state. Zion has continued his wrestling career that includes a heavy gym regime, and he has also released a book called Zion Unmatched. Someone like Zion is such a great example of a person who has overcome extreme adversity and who uses his voice to uplift others, despite all of those years and people who tried to push him down. Zion truly is a one in a million kind of person. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye.